In today's video, how low should you go with carbs in a fat loss diet? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, we are going to discuss just how many carbohydrates you should take in. How low should your carbohydrates go? Or should you be using a low carbohydrate approach to dieting for fat loss? And if you like this type of information about fat loss, about how to build muscle, about how to be the best version of you, well, click subscribe because that's what I love to do here. And today's video comes directly from my Instagram direct message. So if you'd like to send me a message like the one I'm about to review today, send me a direct message and we'll talk about it. So let me read today's question and we'll get started with the discussion. Hey Paul, I like very much your content. Can you specify how low you go with the carbs for obese people in a diet? And I think this comes at a pretty interesting time because just today I saw some news that stated that within a few years, 50 percent of our population is going to be considered obese with an astonishing 25 percent of that population being 100 pounds overweight that to me is a startling number and for years this has been coming i mean the obesity epidemic has basically kicked off since the 50s and it has not slowed down despite a lot of changes and we can discuss a lot about why that might be the the ease of access to high calorie foods Heck, the lowering price of food, food, fast food is now actually less than it was years ago if you correct for inflation. So sometimes it's actually easier and cheaper to eat crap, to eat food that is not really going to be beneficial for your, for your goals. And I think, you know, in my experience, what I see a lot of people doing is they don't really do a lot of their own food prep. And I think we look for answers. What is the reason? And so low carbohydrate diets, low fat diets, these have both gotten a lot of discussion. There were periods where everyone thought, you know what, you have to cut the fat if you want to lose fat. Now, a lot of people talk about the idea that you have to cut out the sugar, you have to get rid of carbohydrates, they worry about insulin. And I'm here to say, well, I don't think either of those is the right answer for every single person. I think that you can have a successful approach either way. Why? Well, as a coach, I like to pay attention to what my clients prefer. Sustainability is going to be ultimately the answer, but don't trust me. I found a nice study. In fact, I found a meta-analysis. A meta-analysis is the examination of data from a number of independent studies on the same subject to determine overall trends. So what is the real value in a meta-analysis? Well, a meta-analysis doesn't look at one study. It looks at multiple studies within the same parameters and comes up with what is considered the gold standard of information. And I ripped these headlines directly from a meta-analysis in 2012 so that we can get this discussion started on how many carbohydrates you should actually be having. Present meta-analysis at randomized controlled trials comparing low carb with low fat diets. We found both diets were equally effective at reducing body weight and waist circumference. So what exactly does that mean? Well, what they did was they looked at studies across many years, many different approaches, and they found that reducing fat during a dieting phase and reducing carbohydrates during a dieting phase had essentially the same results, okay? That means you can use either approach, but what you have to do, no matter what, is reduce one or the other. You need to be paying attention to your overall kind of calorie intake along with your macronutrient breakdown. Now, sometimes this can seem overly confusing and what happens is we find ourselves doing things like a low carb diet or a fasting diet or maybe a carnivore diet or some kind of diet where you're just eliminating a lot of things. Why? Because it's easy. It's easy to just say, you know what, I'm not gonna have any carbohydrates and I'm gonna take, take a shot at this ketogenic diet. And then after a few months, you realize, man, I really cannot do this. And then you try this next diet. So instead of putting in a little bit of work at the beginning, which I'll explain how I think we should be doing this, instead of putting in a little bit of work, we just take a stab at these diets. But the real problem is they're not really sustainable. So when it comes to how low your carbohydrates should be, that really comes down to your lifestyle and your tastes. Do you really enjoy things like bread and pastas or could you see yourself never eating them again? That's the ketogenic diet. Okay, so you have to have 
a realistic outlook on what things you can cut out and what things you want to keep. And if you can do that and you can manage your calories, you can have a real shot at sustainable weight loss because of the statistics behind weight loss, I mean, they're just frightening. For those that enter a weight loss phase, nearly everybody puts the weight back on plus some. But I think a lot of this just comes down to the lack of education. So what would you do? What would I do? I like to keep fats and carbohydrates within very good ranges. The meta-analysis also stated that low-carb diets are at least as effective as low-fat diets for weight loss, regardless of gender, age, length of intervention, diabetes status, or the level of restriction that you use. So what does this mean? It means that either approach can work. Either approach can give you the results that you're looking for. So let's talk about how low I would go with carbohydrates because I said I would answer that. So the answer to that question is, I won't really go below 50 or 60 grams of carbohydrates in a single day for an athlete. Now that is very extreme. I would put that on the very extreme side. Heck, anytime I get somebody under 100 grams of carbohydrates, I start to really pay attention to their mood, how they're doing, how they're performing, because I tend to work with a population of people that are interested in keeping their physique in a really good place, keeping muscle while losing body fat. We compete in, say, physique competitions, or you know, we enter these things with the idea that we wanna have the most muscle and the least amount of body fat. So that specific population, when I get carbohydrates low, it can become really troublesome for the training to continue. However, if we get down to 50 or 60 grams of carbohydrates, what I'll typically do with that person is switch them to a ketogenic approach. Now there are some benefits to ketogenic dieting, which you know, things like, okay, if you remove carbohydrates to the point where we get someone in ketosis, well, cravings tend to go away. Hunger signaling tends to change. You don't get hunger, hungry as frequently, okay? But you are gonna be very glycogen depleted, okay? And it, and it takes a while to adapt to ketosis. And ketosis isn't just low carb, my friends. No, it's at least initially, you're gonna to need to be 75 to 80% of your calories from fats. That can be a very odd diet change for some people. Now, the people that I've coached that have gone through that process into ketosis, love it. I've also had some people that went through it and hated it. But again, this is about finding the sustainable approach for you and not looking at other people and saying, well, I'm doing it wrong because this is working for me, but it's working better for somebody else than what they're doing. If you find something that works for you, pay attention to that. Pay attention to those signals that, wow, this is really working. I can keep a sustainable approach here. You know, the, the problem with something like ketosis is you're gonna have to really cut out a lot of the things that most typical families are gonna eat. So if that's a problem for you, it's worth considering. Also what I like to do when I have people using a very low carb approach, say under 100 grams of carbohydrates and they're doing a lot of training is I will do one or two higher carb refeed days per week. What's this do? It helps restore a little bit of glycogen so your muscles get a little bit fuller. It also gives you something to look forward to. Don't discount the importance of psychology when it comes to your success in a fat loss diet. Doing things that make you feel good occasionally and give you something to look forward to are gonna make this approach much more sustainable. This is why, and here comes my pitch for flexible dieting. What is flexible dieting? Well, you just start paying attention to everything you eat. You start looking at your protein, your carbohydrates, and your fats, and you start managing your diet around that. I have a free ebook on flexible dieting, and so I'm gonna link that below for anyone that's interested. But this approach allows you to kind of find the foods that you enjoy while creating the only thing that actually works for fat loss, a caloric deficit. You must be burning more energy than you are taking in in a 24 hour window. And this doesn't mean you plug all your stats into an online calculator and it says you're in a caloric deficit. Those calculators, while great, I even have one on my website, they can be a great baseline. Oftentimes, they don't take into account, well, how many times have you dieted? Have you had metabolic adaptations? Are there other things going on in your history that would have caused your diet to change? So they're just an idea. They are just an equation, but they do not count for every single person. So really the best way to find out how you should enter a caloric deficit is by doing a diet recall. This means for a while, a week, maybe five days, maybe two weeks, you just start plugging all your information into a caloric tracker. You just start downloading an app like MyFitnessPal and you plug all your information in and you go, you know what, I'm averaging 2,000 calories a day. Well, what does that mean? That means that's what you are baseline, your calories are at to maintain your weight if your weight hasn't changed. So how do we create a caloric deficit? Well, you can continue to eat 2,000 calories and just go move more. Maybe you go for a walk, maybe you go for a jog, maybe you go to the gym, maybe you join a CrossFit, maybe you start boxing, maybe you start swimming. There's so many ways. Get out there, breathe heavy, 
that is great for fat loss and weight loss, okay? But, but you cannot do that unless you actually understand what you're taking in. Once you start being accountable and saying, you know what, I'm gonna eat 2,000 calories every day, I'm gonna exercise like this. If you lose weight, great, keep it going. If you don't, you're not in a caloric deficit. You need to either increase the activity, decrease the calories, and this is a very kind of simplified look at the process, but we have to start there. We have to start with information. This is why the world is becoming obese, because accountability, okay? All right, guys, that's gonna be it for me and my preaching, ranting talk today, but how low I go with carbohydrates, you might be asking the wrong questions, okay? But for anyone that is training regularly, I'd like to keep them at least at 100 grams per day, and if they get below that, I really start to pay attention, so hopefully this answers your questions, and I hope you guys are having an awesome start to the end of 2020 because it's gonna be awesome. All right, guys, I'll talk to you tomorrow.